Welcome back, pet parent. I have a confession to make because I am always talking to you about how I can never recommend a dry food for our pets. And recently was at an event um, at SuperZoo in Las Vegas this year, and I got to hear my guest today speak. And I had to go up to her at the end of the event and just be like, oh my gosh, you have totally, in this moment, changed my mind, and I need to talk to you more. So I brought her on today to talk to you a little bit more about a food that is air dried, that does not contain any synthetics. And so it pretty much meets all the standards that I would have for a food that I would recommend for you for your pets. And it also has that convenience factor that a lot of the foods I normally recommend don't necessarily have. So I'm really excited to introduce you today to Maria Ringo of Carnivore, and you may have heard of this food, though it is something you have to go to a specialty store, an indie pet store to find generally here in the U.S. So we're going to talk to Maria today. I'm going to introduce, have her introduce herself in just a second, but if this happens to be the first time that you are listening to me, that you just found this podcast, welcome. My name is Jessica. I'm a canine nutritionist and holistic pet health coach. And on this podcast, The Pet Parenting Reset, we talk about all things holistic health and nutrition for your dogs and cats, because when we know better, we can do better. So thank you so much for being here with me, Maria. How are you doing today? Thanks for having me. It's, it's nice to see you since Vegas. It seems like a yeah. long time ago now. I know, and it wasn't even a month. I mean, at yeah. the time we're recording this, it hasn't even been a month, but it does seem like ages ago. Yeah. It was yeah. so much fun this year and so much more exhausting than it has been in past year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very busy show for everybody that I know. I think we were saying people are back from COVID. You know, yeah. I've been doing these shows for probably almost 40 years now, and it has changed a lot over these 40 years. But during like the last four years, it's been just so, mm -hmm. and now everybody's yeah. back and they all want to talk. And I love it. Yes, everybody is back. And I did get to meet so many wonderful people, including you. And I'm really excited for us to chat today and me to bring this information, well, really you to bring this information to the listeners and the viewers, because we do put this on YouTube as well. And I would just really like to start off because you have such an incredible history in pet food, starting back in the 80s when the only other person I know who was like talking about this, doing this in the 80s was Dr. Billinghurst on the other side of the world in Australia. So can you just give us a brief like synopsis of this path sure. you blazed in the pet food yeah. industry? It's one of those paths. I can't believe I actually walked it. And then I look back and I go, oh my gosh, it's been that long. So you're right. In the 80s, I was in my 20s and I got a new dog and there was nothing to feed my dog. I was working in food co-op. I was eating beans and rice and wanting to be clean and healthy. And I worked out and I wasn't about to feed one of the major grocery store brands. It was just garbage when I read the ingredients. So a friend of mine, very knowledgeable uh, about all things pets, I will be forever grateful to her. She said, let's start a business. Let's make our own dog food. And being in our 20s and being foolish, we were like, long story short, we started this company that we named Sojourner Farms. And it was a mixture of oats and herbs and nuts, um, all ground up. And you added water and fresh meat. And it was based on the teachings of a well-known herbalist named Juliet de Baraclay Levy. And she was a European gypsy woman. Um, of royal descent of some sort, and she raised Afghan hounds, and she was a complete outlier in the pet industry. She wasn't even part of the pet industry. She was an herbalist. Well, anyway, we went and saw her and talked with her and got the whole idea and um, put together this commercial pet food. So there was literally nothing like it. We, we would go to those shows very much like Super Zoo, much smaller in those days. And literally, we were the only two women there. Like, yeah, it was so wow. different. Um, everybody laughed and said, oh, organic, isn't that cute? And very expensive and so much trouble. And of course, Jessica, you and I both know this is the way that so many people are now moving 
in the direction of, well, it may not just be about price or about convenience. Maybe there's something to the nutrition. And fast forward again, um, I sold that business to some folks that renamed it Sojo's and Sojo's became a pretty big brand. And I went to school. I became a homeopathic uh, doctor. I had a family practice for 10 years. And my husband and I about 15 years ago said, there's got to be something we can do to make things better because what we what I was seeing in my patients was people wanted to feed raw. They wanted to feed whole foods, fresh foods, but there was this real disconnect. Um, so it's interesting I heard you in the intro to me talking about how you would never recommend a dry food and I don't blame you because what has been out there for years and years and years is just shit and sawdust mixed together with a bunch of synthetics and food fractions and not really good. Um, not to name any names, of course. Um, yeah. <laughs> so what Dave and I put together was carbon floor. And what we thought was, let's create a convenient, clean food. And that's, I'm super proud of it. And I'm so glad you discovered us because we're low key people. We're not out there to change the world. We just want to make the world a better place. And what we could see from our many years in the industry is there's people that really want to feed a clean diet. But you know what? They've got three kids to get off to school in the morning. They are not going to wait for thawing. They're not going to mix and cook. And that's fantastic. It's the best way to feed your animal. And not everybody can do it and not everybody wants to do it. So how can we meet people where they're at? So we created a, a, a recipe um, that is, like you said, it's quick baked for four minutes, just enough to kill the pathogens, only whole foods. There's no synthetics, no chemicals, no food fractions, no meals, nothing. It's meat, eggs, liver, a few vegetables, maybe some apples and a bunch of ground sprouted seeds. That's it. And then we mash it together like cookie dough. We roll it out. We bake it for four minutes, just enough to kill salmonella, E. coli. And then long, cool air dry. It goes through this long tunnel and it's just cool air, cool air, cool air to draw the moisture. Then we can put it in a bag and we can say to every consumer, look, we know you're used to this. This takes no time at all. Start here yeah. on your journey. And, and I talked to, at SuperZoo at, at, at where you and I met about, it's really, it's a journey. And so I get tired of hearing people judge other people and there's the holier than thou attitude. And some people have a lot of money. Some people don't. Yeah. Some people have a lot of time. Some people don't. Okay. Can we stop judging each other? Can we start with what works for us? And we have now over these last 14 years found a huge number of our customers are actually people that feed raw most of the time. They just don't have time all the time. Three kids have to get to school in the morning. The dog's got the runs or whatever. Okay. Carnivore in the bowl or when they're traveling. Or when they're asking someone else to watch their animal. And, and that person is not about to do all this, you know, cooking and preparing. They just, they won't. Okay, here you go, Aunt Betty. Here's the bag of card for feed the dog, keep her alive till we get back. And we don't have transition issues because you're not feeding crap. You're feeding whole food. It's quick bake, air dried, really simple. And we've had a lot of success with it. And I'm super proud of it because that's what I wanted. I just want to, I mean, having worked day after day with, sick people, right? That was my job. And of course, they would tell me about their pets because of my history. And I would get to talking to them about pet nutrition. And, you know, I would I would share homeopathic stuff with them uh, for their pets. I would get very involved in their lives. And, and I heard this over and over again. What can we do that's just, can I just have something easy? There you have it. And that's what current for, it, that it's not rocket science. It's just clean, healthy foods made it, Processed as, as 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 gently as possible in a bakery, and then off you go. It it can sit on the store shelf. It can sit in your pantry. You don't have to refrigerate. You don't have to thaw it. You don't have to mix it. You don't have to hydrate it. You know, and then hopefully, as you learn more, as we learn, what did you say? It's the Maya Angelou quote. As we learn, we we know better. We do better. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Take it we do. There. Just take we it from there. So that's what we're all about. That's what I'm all about. I love, love, love hearing people say, oh, okay, I don't have to go all in because yeah. I'm intimidated by that. I don't understand it. I don't have time for it. I don't have the money for it. 
Phew. Okay. Let's just start with carnivore. Learn, listen, follow your podcast, read some books, take some baby steps, wait till the kids get a little older, you know. And that's, that's the thing that I've noticed with like working with clients is that they do want to do yep. everything they possibly can for their pets. Yep. But I mean, you've got, like you were saying, you've got kids, you've got jobs, you've got just mm -hmm. household responsibilities. Yep. And oftentimes our pets, just because of, you know, they're not talking in your face generally some dogs may it's they just kind of they get they get what they can get and they're wonderful additions and parts of the family and they're you know jumping up on the couch to cuddle with you on movie night and all the things all the wonderful things that our pets do for us but for me like I realize and I'm sure you do too this is almost a full-time job just yeah. doing the research staying on top of uh, you know going to AFCO doing like learning all of this is it's not only very time consuming, but um, emotionally yes. exhausting it yeah. can be because of how the big guys are. I mean, it's very much just a way to get rid of human waste. And that is not yeah. what you're doing at all. Yep, that's right. So I heard somebody the other day, and I wish I could remember who it was. Oh, Krista Fox at um, Pug and Hound pet apothecary she said that carnivore is in a class of its own like there isn't anything else like it That's and true. i was like okay i'm on the right path i've heard that many many times and it's 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 funny because it's just we took the very simplest simplest premise um and that's what people that's what i want as a mother as a business owner as someone who has to work very hard very long days some days um and has plenty of worries you know, like everyone else, we, we want to do the best we can. And we just want it simple. Please just, you know, keep it simple so that I can manage it on a day to day. That, that's all I'm asking. And um, we have found a lot of store owners will say, well, where do I stop this? Like, does it go with next to the freeze? Does it go, you know, and that's what we, we do try to help our, our retailers, our independent retailers say, to tell them where it should go in the store, which is pretty much, you know, wherever you have the air dried food or next to the freezers or something, but not with your kibble. We don't call carnivore a kibble because we do try to make a distinction. It is not extruded. You know, it has no corn, no wheat, all that crap. It doesn't have all that stuff. It's, 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 um, it is in a class of its own. You know, it's not quite raw, which it's not. It's baked. And we've always said that. Yeah. It's quick baked. <laughs> Very much like what they call air dried, and then it is air dried. You know, yeah. so where does it go? I didn't know. Yeah. I try not to worry about it too much. I just love talking to people about their animals' health and watching them evolve. And I know I can tell you hundreds of times now in 14 years, I have had consumers call me and say, I cannot believe the change in my animal. Just the uh -huh. ears, the itchy skin, the gas the bloat, the illness, the lack of energy, all of it, the arthritis. When you get an animal, dog, because we make cat food too, a dog or a cat onto a clean, healthy diet like that, just starting with carnivore. You don't have to go all into the, you know, raw chicken meat, blah, blah. Just starting with carnivore, they see the difference and it sparks their imagination and their hopefulness. That's, it does, you don't have to be a rocket scientist. You can actually, I can this and I just I love that yeah and I do want to talk a little bit more about the ingredients with you but I want to take a little tangent first because yep. you um did become a doctor and uh, you were treating patients and yep. as part of your practice as I understand it you uh used homeopathy is that correct I was a homeopathic doctor I'm retired now yes okay yes. so homeopathy is something that I don't talk a whole heck of a lot about because and I, I don't really have people on that talk about it a whole lot I think mm -hmm. it's difficult to find people who are practicing homeopathy anymore and especially with you know how the, the pharmaceutical oh, yes. companies are come down here in the U.S. It's, I mean I'm sure it's very similar in Canada and you want to know why they come down so hard on us Jessica so well, we they cannot can't. patent the homeopathic medicine. I just want to tell your listeners that. Okay. 
there I know some wonderful, well-trained medical doctors who became homeopaths. I know wonderful herbalists that became homeopaths. And I know people like myself, just, you know, smart people that wanted to make the world a better place, become homeopaths. What we all have in common is this curiosity of how the body works, how energy works in the body and how everything affects us. And in the remedies that we prescribe, there's great power. But what there is not is great profit. And since you cannot patent a remedy, because I could make a remedy for you. I could, and we did in medical school, we spent a day and made a remedy. You just need a plant or a mineral or a fragment of an animal bone, and you make the remedy out of that. And you can't, you can't patent uh, arnica flower. Yeah. It belongs to God. Right. It belongs to people. And so since they can't make money on us, they're going to turn everyone against us. But believe you me, if they could, I would be a very highly paid, very highly esteemed physician right now. Let me tell you, if they could make money. But you can't. Like it, It's very time intensive. If I were to take your case, it would take me two hours. And I would have to sit and you would have to talk and I would be writing and then I would be researching for another two hours. And then I would get you this five or ten dollar remedy, and you would feel better. And it would be, you know, who who's making money here? No one, you know. Yeah, that's why I just had to say that because well, yeah. that's the that's at the bottom of it all. That's where the harassment comes in. Because if you could make money off of it, it would be a whole nother story. Oh, absolutely right. Um, I agree with that a hundred percent. And I I have dabbled in it a little bit for myself and for my animals. Oh. And I have a, a friend who, um, she mostly deals with energy with cats. Yeah. And she is much more into homeopathy than I am. So she's always like, try this one, try that one. And she, yeah. you know, muscle tests things. And yeah. it's so very interesting. Fascinating, isn't it? Here and is. your animal doesn't know what you're doing your animal doesn't have preconceived notions and this this criticism that it's all a placebo effect yes but when your dog or your cat or your guinea pig or your goat or your cow responds so beautifully so quickly so completely how do you explain that they go oh, well, you know it was just happenstance <laughs> you have to laugh i love it i'll be a homeopath till the day i die uh, I never stop learning. Even though I am retired, I have to choose, you know, am I retired or not? Because people ask me all the time, can you take my case? I am retired. Um, I still help friends and family, of course. That's homeopathy is in me. I've been studying it since I was 25. I love it. I respect it. And uh, the power of homeopathy is incredible. I have seen it change lives. I have seen it do incredible things in the right hands. It does take some education. You do have to understand what mm -hmm. you're dealing with here. But, boy, it's a wonderful science. It's an art and a science put together. Yeah, and the way I understand it is that it is energetic medicine. Yeah. yeah. And it is very customized and specific to yeah. your individual symptoms. Yep, that's correct. Which is why it takes a practitioner like you so long. It can take you so long to pinpoint, yeah. like, Okay, the I need to know exactly. Like, is your cough dry or is it wet or is you know where is it? Is it yeah, coming from your throat? Or your is there pneumonia yeah. in your family? We go back three generations because our energy is not just right here; it's in us. Just remember, my ovaries were in my mother. Yeah, her ovaries were in her mother. Mm -hmm. so we have passed down ovaries, literally egg cells, through the matrilineal generations. So what happened to them, what affected them energetically, shock, crises, starvation, continued on. That energetic vibe has continued on for me. And although I did not live in Poland, I did not starve in Poland. I was not harassed in Poland. My great grandmother was. Right. Mm -hmm. and when you when you when you look at homeopathy from that perspective. There is no other medicine, maybe Chinese medicine somewhat, but there is no other medicine that takes all of that into consideration. I could do a whole podcast on homeopathy. Okay. I used to get a, <laughs> be a faculty member 
And one of my specialties was history of homeopathy and also teaching the rudimentaries of homeopathy. I've done some some, um, some courses on homeopathy um, for Dogs Naturally magazine. I did a course for them and I've done some in some stores where we've the store owner has set aside a whole weekend and I will go and teach homeopathy for eight hours and we'll have 50 people there wow. just taking notes, just learning. That's what I can do for my dog because literally you're going to pay $10 for this tube of remedy that lasts forever and you can use it 50 times. Like, you know, there's enough doses in there. So, it, you know, it's got a low barrier to entry as far as the cost. Mm-hmm. And we could put together a kit for you that would encompass just about any illness or injury your dog or cat could get into that you could keep forever. And all you need is a book or some teaching or, or my phone number or, you know, that kind of thing. And you could really, really help your animal thrive. Of course, you take your animal to the vet when it's time. And yeah. that's critical too. You need to know, all right, it's time to call it quits here. We got to go to the vet, right? Nothing yeah. wrong with that. Yeah. Oh, we should all be working together, but try to keep the animal at home and ease the animal's suffering as much as you can. Is it minor? Can you manage it? Do that. Your your animal will be better off. Yeah. I I love that you have so much knowledge and so much like background in really a holistic way of and I think you I was listening to you on the BK Pets podcast and um you don't you you like to just refer to everything as natural rearing. Is that correct? I love yes. that term, natural yeah. rearing. That came from Juliet Levy because it's it's much more than just food. You know, look at our families, look at our, our own lives. If I were to eat a really clean diet that is very specific to my needs, which would be amazing, and it would take me a lot of research to figure that out, right? But let's say I did that, but then I smoked or lived right next to a freeway you know, four drinks a night, um, never exercised, and lived with someone that abused me. How healthy am I? Yeah, right? not very. We must look at it as natural rearing for our animal. It's, it's, it's uh, what's the source of their water? What is the source of their air? Um, I had a friend who was doing everything right, and her dogs kept getting cancer. It turned out she lived near a sod farm. Mm. and they were spraying and you know it's just like the, making the connection sometimes takes a minute yeah. and oh my god these chemicals were coming across into her backyard so she moved she just you yeah. know she had to move um these are the things that encompass that get encompassed in natural rearing what is the what's the vibe in your house are you guys always fighting or is there a distrust amongst the partners Etc. 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 All the things that go into health are equally important. Food's huge, of course. Medicine is huge, of course. But there's also the source of their happiness, their comfort level, their safety, the air, the water, etc. You know, is their bed someplace they feel safe? Maybe they need a crate. You know, I learned that a long time ago with my dog. Um, he needed a crate. He felt safe. She wasn't abandoned or locked up. No, no. It was like, hey, I'm going to sleep now. You, it's just, you know, my roommate used to crawl into the crate with him because he was very happy in his. Yeah, I, I talk about crates quite a bit as well because I was, a, I was for a short period of time a dog trainer. And that's like one of like, I, I go kind of cringe when people are like, I need to crate train my dog. And I'm like, yes, you do. But why? Like. Yep. Yep. Because so many people use it as punishment and I can't oh, really? stand behind that. But that's like my crates in my house are open at all yeah. times. Right. And they just go in there. Well, and they have a case. Yes. Right? Yes. It's, they're, they're, they get away from us. They're, they, they've got their stuffies and their, and their beds. No one bothers them. It's in a nice corner. You know, Heck yeah. It's like my yeah. bed, you know. Stay away from Yes. So you brought up veterinarians and how, yes, veterinary care is very important. We need to know when to do things at home, when to go to the vet. And one of the things that I'm curious if you hear a lot of, because so many of our veterinarians, I mean, well, we know they don't really get a whole lot of nutrition training, if any, in their um, whatever program, whatever college they're in taking their veterinary 
yep. medicine courses. And then when they come out, they pretty much like it's whatever food sponsored that college, whatever food they were given for free for those however many years. That's yep. what they're recommending in their practice. And a lot of them are, you know, there are certainly a handful of them that are continue their education. And yes, they absolutely want your dog on a fresh food diet. There are a handful of them that can get on board with home cooking and adding fresh food to the kibble. They're, so it's not an all or nothing situation by any means, but the majority of them, I think, are very much in this. You have to keep your dog on a kibble because it is completely imbalanced and it has all of the vitamins and minerals and blah, 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 blah. And I, even though, like, so carnivore is not a kibble, right. but I wonder if you notice that it is more accepted by veterinarians. Um, yes, because it's familiar. And I'm a big fan of veterinarians. And I, having been a practitioner myself, I have a soft spot for people that really want to learn a craft, their art and science of medicine. They choose veterinarian skills. They go and they pay a lot of money. And getting into vet school is very, very tough. It's not easy to do. There are far fewer vet schools than medical schools. So on the one hand, it's easier for one of the big or two of the big pet food companies to kind of own the school. Um, on the other hand, there are very few options. So these veterinarians are like anyone else. They, they, want, they want to make the world a better place. They don't have enough information and they have to earn money because how many times have you heard people say, oh my God, the vet wanted $200 to do that surgery. That's not a lot of money to do a surgery when you consider her over. Mm -hmm. Did you know veterinarians have a very high rate of suicide? Very. And it's I sad to me. So I always want to say, I, I think veterinarians are people too, and they need education. And you're right. I don't disagree with anything you said. There are just like there are well-meaning pet parents who don't have the info. The problem is the veterinarian is going to tell the pet parent, no, no, you, I have to feed this kibble and it has to be this brand. And by the way, your dog's overweight, so it has to be the weight management formula, which is complete marketing. It's marketing. Yeah. So, yes, yes, I have found that vets in general are more accepting of a dry food that is complete and balanced. It's all up to it beyond AFCO standards. Um, and it is familiar. And so they feel comfortable because they are responsible for their advice to you. On the other hand, a lot of vets have told us over the years as we've approached vet, vet clinics, you know, they say, oh, I can't sell carnivore because you don't have senior formula, puppy formula, weight management formula, these things that they need on their shelf in order to stay in business. They need yeah. what we call passive income. So they need a shelf that their admin can take that client to and say, okay, here's the bag of this, and here's the medicine of that, and here's the blah, blah, blah. And that adds $100 to the bill. But that is what that vet needs to pay her rent. So that's the other side of the story. Um, and and we've, we've been told, you know, oh, no, you know, how can it just be all life stages? Well, my answer to that is when you were growing up, did your grandmother eat a whole different diet? Or did she just eat less or more than the three-year-old? And did your mom eat a whole different diet? Or did she just eat less or more? Then the 16-year-old, like common sense tells us that if you're eating appropriate foods, then puppies need more, fat dogs need a little less, right? It's, it's marketing and, that, and the vets are really on that. And like I said, it's, I understand why. I get it. I respect their need to earn a living and, and it's not easy to make a living as a vet. People have high expectations of veterinarians and they don't get the respect that they really need to earn they really don't get that from people because it costs a lot to to run a clinic and um people don't want to pay it and there's no there's very little health insurance out there people don't really cough up for dog and cat insurance they don't right yeah yeah um, yeah like yeah. you said earlier carnivore is in a class on its own even in the vet clinics they're like yep maybe right i don't know what to do with this but it's good don't know what to do with this I haven't had too many vets say it's a bad food because when you look at the ingredients and you look at the guaranteed analysis, there's nothing to complain about. There's no reason not to feed this food. So 
So they don't object that from that standpoint, you know, the whole complete and balanced thing, because if you put together a proper diet, it's complete and balanced. It's fine. There's no reason to object to it. Yeah. And then they'll say, well, you know, it's a senior dog, so you should really put them on senior board with Okay. Whatever. Yes. No, I, I agree. There's a lot of marketing in that. And I think a lot of it too probably stemmed from the fact that, you know, kibbles, actual kibbles are balanced with vitamin and mineral packs. And so it's just, you know, that's one of the other things I wanted to talk to you about really? um, with, for me, I am not a fan, especially of vitamin and mineral packs, but if we can get away from any synthetics at all yeah. in the food, that's my preference. And that's what you have done and been able to provide a shelf stable food, which just yeah is the reality is I've, I have heard of carnivore for many years and I just have to be honest that I didn't give it a second thought. Cause I'm like, it's a dry food that sits on yep. the shelf forever. Absolutely. And I just didn't give it a second thought. And then it yep. was actually hearing you speak that I'm like, oh my gosh, this woman knows what she's talking about. Yep. The um, vitamin mineral packs are a real issue. And it was one of the first things Dave and I tackled when we decided to put together a recipe that we were hoping people could use as the bridge to raw, like we like to say. And um, it's ubiquitous. Like every dog food has it. Like natural brands, it's cheaper than putting in whole foods or more meat. It's much cheaper. And none of that stuff, none of the synthetics are made in the U.S. They're all made offshore and they're imported in big dusty bags. And it's chemicals. It's all poorly lab made. And okay, um, so are some medicines and sometimes those are necessary. So what's the big objection? I'll give you my objection. And that is that synthetic nutrients are taken into the body very differently from whole food nutrients. So whole food nutrients have all their family of co-nutrients around them. In other words, vitamin A, which comes naturally in carrots, is not on its own in the carrot. There are literally hundreds of co-nutrients around that vitamin A that make it digestible and bioavailable when you eat the carrot. If you just take retinol, which is the chemical vitamin A, you have now lost that entire family of co-nutrients. So what happens is the body ingests the retinol in that synthetic vitamin pack and says, wait a sec, where's the rest of them? Doesn't know what to do with that nutrient. Has to find a place to store the nutrient, usually in the fat, while it waits for the whole nutrients needed to make retinol bioavailable, waits for the natural ingestion of those co-nutrients because they're very small amounts once it has them all now it can package it all together and use the vitamin a the body is so smart if too much vitamin a just to continue on that example so as not to confuse people if too much vitamin a all on its own is ingested and stored in the fat the body eventually says that's toxic waste i have to get rid of that so now it goes into a detox procedure, stressing the kidneys, the lungs, the skin, the GI. All of the organs of detox now have a big job to do. And your body, your dog's body, is now vulnerable because it's working real hard to get rid of this toxic waste. Along comes the chemicals from that sod factory next door, that sod farm. And now it's got to deal with this other invader. And the entire immune system is on fire. That's called inflammation. Inflammation causes disease. So when you really just peel it down, ingesting the synthetic nutrients is sometimes important on a short-term basis. And I had a heck of a time getting that message through to my patients. They'd be like, well, I'm really healthy. I take a supplement every day. I take a, you know, one a day or whatever. And I'm like, how long have you been doing that? Oh, yeah. you know. And so we would have the time. 
and the and the truth is that the body knows how to digest and make available to all of its organs and all of its systems whole foods. It does not know. It does not recognize the synthetics. It recognizes them as foreign. And what does the body do with foreign invaders? Up comes the immune system. Up comes the T cells and the B cells and all these fighting mechanisms in the body to say, wait, 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 no, that, what is that? That's not coming in here. So you can take all the synthetic nutrients you want. After a while, the body puts up a big fight. Now you've got chronic inflammation. And one of my favorite images is it's like your body's running on a hamster wheel trying to get nutrition because it's not getting nutrition. You're taking those vitamins, those synthetic vitamins, and the body's going, oh, I can use some of this. I'm going to store the rest of that. But it's not getting whole nutrition. It's not getting what it needs. So it's limping along. And your dog's going to start to itch. Mm -hmm. And that's going to get those ears and then the breath. And then one by one by one until the hamster wheel has exhausted him. And now he's got cancer. Now he's got all these human diseases, all these illnesses that animals are now getting that they didn't used to get. Because we have changed their diet from go out and catch a rabbit, bring in a dead bird, the stuff Julia DeBerkeley Levy would have loved, to here's the kibble in your bowl. This is what you're going to get every day the rest of your life. And the nutrition, because it's extruded with high heat, high pressure, and acid, there is literally nothing left alive. So they add all these synthetic nutrients and then they spray on fats and attractants and then they put in all of the stuff that's supposed to keep it whole. And that is what your animal eats the rest of its life. And you wonder why animals have such an explosion of chronic illness. So we just dial it back to, you know what? Try to eat as many whole foods in their whole form as you can. And I say to my customers with carnivore, Shred in some carrots, add a fresh egg or some yogurt or some cottage cheese or some peanut butter or some fresh meat in a separate meal. Like do the best you can with your carnivore. You don't have to add anything if you don't have time. You really, you, sh you should be okay, but it's not ideal. Ideally, every animal needs some fresh food, just like us. You know, if we eat breakfast cereal, ex breakfast cereal is extruded. It's all the same industry. Synthetic vitamins. It's high heat, high pressure, and acid. Break everything down. They spray on the sugar and flavors, and they say, here, kids, have a great day. Right? Same thing. So with carnivore, tell me a little bit about your ingredients mm -hmm. and the sourcing. and Because I, I read somewhere that... Um, sourcing and sustainability are also very important to you. They are very important. So we get meat from our supplier who supplies the restaurant industry. And the duck, the chicken, and the fish are all Canadian because we're in Canada, for your listeners. <laughs> and then we import from New Zealand the goat, the venison, and the lamb because that was the cleanest consistent source right sometimes people ask me why don't you do all organic like you did with sojourner farms well because i could say it's organic sometimes it is like can't be all the time there's not enough i get my family meat from a farmer two and a half hours from here he is five generations organic he's growing turkeys right now he just asked me do you want a turkey for christmas right that's where i get my meat there is such demand for his produce there's not enough for the pet food market. So if you're trying to put organic meat into pet food, you're going to have very small business and it's going to be inconsistent. And then there's going to be the day your distributor says, oh, I couldn't get organic and I substituted something else. And that's not acceptable to us. So mm -hmm. Dave and I did our research a long time ago. This is my husband's job too. This is like, you know, he's so keen on this. I remember him dragging me out to an apple farmer in Ontario. He's like, I want to check out the guy's apples. I'm like, okay, Dave, let's do it. So 
it's it's a, such a simple recipe. There's like eight ingredients, and three of the ingredients are sprouted seeds. Or so our organic sprouted seeds are. It's like making fine wine. They they're they're sprouted. They're all USDA organic. They're sprouted just the right amount, and they're dried, and they're ground into this lovely meal. You know, it's a sprouted seed meal. And we use them liberally. And that is the key. That is how we are able to put super nutrients to this mixture that is so simple. Meat, liver, eggs, all locally sourced, either Ontario or, like I said, New Zealand for three of the meats. And we mash it up together. We we know our suppliers. That's, like I said, that's Dave's job. So I can't claim to personally, I don't even remember that apple farmer's name. But, you know, he has made it a point to get to know these people and to keep it as local as possible. I know we get our duck from Quebec and, and that guy is like, he sells really expensive duck to really fancy restaurants. And he's like, don't tell anybody I'm selling it to you. We're like, okay, well, really good, you know. But our whole goal is to try to keep it close to us, as, as close as we can and run a business, right? Yeah. But nothing, nothing outside of New Zealand. Have you ever been to New Zealand? It's one of the haven't countries in the world there are more sheep than people seriously like 20 million to one um i spent three months there and mm -hmm. it is it is a farming agricultural island so talk about clean air clean water and they know how to they know how to raise animals there so you will get pasture raised everything they don't have factory farms in new zealand they don't need to they have so much space and so few people that this is so that's why we went to New Zealand. We really enjoyed that, and we've both been there, so we could actually see for ourselves. This is how we're dealing with it here. No chemicals, nothing from a lab. So there's sprouted seeds. There's a few vegetables. Uh, some of our recipes have whole brown rice, and helps keep it together and adds minerals. We actually like the whole brown rice. That's the only grain. There's no corn. There's no wheat. Nothing that shouldn't be in there, right? Again, okay. locally sourced. Um, milled in Ontario, baked in Quebec, and then shipped all over the world. Tell me a little bit more about the um, sprouted seeds. Yeah. And that's also available as the, um, the you know, the four, four, four yes, the yeah. sprouted seeds and the greens. Yeah. The, the, grass, sprouted, so. the sprouted seeds are a collection of uh, lentils and barley and chia and broccoli and there's two different we have uh flora four and flora four greens plus and we put the flora four collection into our carnivore all of our carnivore products and it's it's it we saw such a, an amazing difference when we were testing the product on all of our friends and families dogs and cats and gerbils and horses so we said we have to sell this separately it is an amazing superfood it is simply there's no heat applied it is not process in any way we grow the sprouts we dry them out naturally not under heat and we grind them up and we put them in a bag that's all usda organic 100 percent four ingredients three four ingredients and a tablespoon at a time into whatever you're feeding is a great way to start on that path to natural rearing because you will see so it's such intense superfood nutrition, especially the omega. The omega-3 fatty acids in that product are amazing. And you will see the difference in your itchy dog within, you know, 10 days, two weeks. I've had numerous, numerous consumers tell me that. We put it in our smoothies. And when yeah. we met in Las Vegas, I was making smoothies for everybody at our booth. For people, everybody's like, wait, is this people food or animal food? I'm like, it's <laughs> Anybody's food. This yeah. is my point. It is yes, you can eat it. Feed it to your child. Just mix it into their yogurt. We have a bag at home on the counter. I put it into my smoothies, my breakfast cereal, my oatmeal. Right? I make bone broth oatmeal all the time. It's my mm -hmm. breakfast. Oh wow. And I will stir in um, two tablespoons of four of four to get omega-3 fatty acids, live enzymes, and Main the main event, billions of CFUs of native probiotics. Mm. Now, when you buy a bag of Carnivore, did you ever notice how it looks um, vacuum packed? Because mm -hmm. you don't vacuum pack it; it's a pancake, like it's flat. 
and it looks like you sucked all the air out of the bag. Those are the probiotics, which are alive, eating the oxygen in the bag. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's interesting. That's what that is, because we don't, we don't do anything. We put it in the bag, we seal it up. And because we don't over process any of our recipes, those probiotics are still alive. And we've been shelf testing them for 14 years. Like, yeah. we still have bags with live probiotics from 13 years ago. We don't um, recommend you hold on to carnivore. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's important to us mm -hmm. that we know, you know. And so the difference is native probiotics come from food. They come from the soil. And if you think about it, a seed, a tiny little seed, has all the nutrition in it required to grow a huge plant. Think of an acorn and an oak tree. Mm -hmm. Everything needed to make that oak tree, all the nutrition, all the DNA, everything is in that acorn. So when you take a seed and you sprout it, what you're releasing is the phytic acid shell that holds all those probiotics, enzymes, minerals, vitamins, everything in it and now it's available in your gut mm -hmm. and you release the energy you can chew a flax seed for 10 hours you will not get the same nutrition as if you simply sprout it overnight and then eat it it's a it's a different seed altogether totally different so that's what we discovered with carnivore you can add all this nutrition and you don't have to process it you don't need anything faint. So I think you answered the question I'm getting ready to ask you, but not in a way that people would understand. Because you did mention legumes and you did yeah. mention brown rice. Yeah. And somehow, some way, uh, because they, the media did such a good job uh, and vet, veterinarians did such a good job um, scaring people yeah. off of grain-free diets. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about why it is okay that there are some legumes, some brown rice? If you, so what happened with that whole grain free thing? And it was pushed by the big pet food companies because there are a number of us smaller people, smaller companies that are putting boutique diets out there, is what they call them, right? Simple different foods. And one of the things that everybody seemed to appreciate was grain-free. Why grain-free? Because in standard grocery store kibble, there is a lot of wheat and corn. Frappy, floor sweepings, wheat and corn. And that is not necessary or good for your dog. But it's cheap and it fills up that kibble. And then they spray the fat on and the attractants and all that, right? So they feel threatened by the competition, understandably so, because we are innovating and also teaching people. You don't need to feed that crap. So if you look on a recipe for any standard um, grain-filled, typical grocery store, it's full of wheat and chaff and corn and food fractions and pea protein legume protein. So then this whole thing happened with don't feed grain free. Why? Well, because we tested a couple brands and they fell short of the nutrition. Well, some of the bigger pet food companies were doing grain free products. And instead of adding more meat, which would make sense, but that would cost money, mm -hmm. they added more food fractions and synthetic nutrition. And that is not good for the animal. So I'm sure there are a number of grain-free foods out there that are really bad for dogs. 100% sure of that. But not every grain-free product is bad for dogs. And not every grain is bad for dogs. So step back. Use your common sense. Anything that comes out of big pet food, take it with a grain of salt. Because it's just about competition for them. So if they say grain-free is all bad, um, just think for a second. Is that really ringing true for me and my animal or not? Number one. Number two, what is on that ingredient list? At the end of the day, it is the consumer's responsibility to read the ingredient list. It should not be starting with grains. It should start with meat, right? It yeah. should start with meat. And, you know, some, some 
whole brown rice, that's okay. That's not going to hurt your animal. And we have a lot of people asking for that. Also, if it's grain-free, what else is in there? Is it food fractions? Is it cheap pea proteins, cheap legumes? Or is it meat, liver, and eggs? Read the ingredients. That's all that's about. But it, they were very successful in scaring a lot of people. I had a lot of friends and family call me and say, I feed that recipe of yours that's grain free. Is you know, is it bad? And I go, read the ingredients. Is there anything in there that's bad for you? And legumes got lumped into that because there's also, there are companies that overuse the legume and they should not be overused. So two th things different with, with carnivores, we don't put legumes in anything. We put sprouted legumes in, and that's a whole different food. Like yeah. I said, you can chew on a flaxseed till the cows come home. You won't get the nutrition that a sprouted flaxseed will give you. Same thing with the organic brown lentils that we add. We add red lentils and brown lentils, red and brown, I think. There's a green. Anyway, I forget. Maybe all, right? And they get sprouted. It is a completely different nutrient nobody's dog is chewing on these legumes, you know, for hours. No, we're not. It's not a filler. So read the ingredients list. That's I just beg every consumer. And if you read the ingredients list, you're a smart person. You can read. What's on that? Is it food you understand? There's nothing wrong with sprouted seeds. But are the first three or is it in the top five ingredients that like, you know, lentils? Why? Are they sprouted lentils? That's a different thing. If it's just peas, just plain old peas, like, look at it. What's what's above it? Mm -hmm. Please tell me there's meat and liver and eggs. Right. If there's meat and liver and eggs, and then you get to the bottom, and there's sprouted seeds or some salt or some baking soda or some rosemary or some, you know, whatever. Okay, you know, Rodney Habib likes to talk about the salt rule. Anything that comes after salt, there's... It's not a material amount. So if someone tries to tell you, well, we have sprouted seeds in our food and it's after salt or it's, yeah. a, you know, no, they don't. They sprinkled it in like fairy dust. Yeah. We put several of, several of those competitors and they all fell by the wayside because at the end of the day, it doesn't perform. Your dog is no better. It's still itchy. Yeah. Like you need to actually feed food to your animal. And then your animal will start to feel better. And then you will feel good about your purchase because you'll know, okay, it actually performs. It did what it, what Maria said it would do. Yeah, <laughs> right. So the whole issue with grain-free, it's had its day. It, it, they, they bring it back up when they start to feel threatened. Oh, it comes mm -hmm. back up again. Read the ingredients. Don't feed a grain-free that's full of crap. Yeah. And there's plenty of those. Don't feed them. Yeah. If it's well, meat and eggs and liver and sprouted seeds and vegetables. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, I still. Grain free? Right. I still get people to this day that are like, no, my veterinarian, I was just there last week and they said no grain free. I know. And, like, I know. <laughs> and we, we will always have that, which is yeah. it's part of our human condition. We, we have our habits. We have our, our fears. And it yeah. takes a lot for us to move beyond that, which is why, like I said earlier, I defend the veterinarians to a point because okay. they are people too, and they have a lot mm -hmm. to learn. And we all have to open our minds so that when we know better, we do better. And you and I have both met tons of lovely veterinarians who yeah. are listening and learning and opening up their practice to new ideas, to homeopathy, to herbs, to fresh food and you know there, there's a lot of them out there and there's there are more and more out there i had lots of conversation at super soup um it's very encouraging to me because back in the day <laughs> people say, gosh 35 years ago that was just not happening you know like you said dr billinghurst and, and juliet levy who wasn't she wasn't a vet but she was an herbalist right so she would work on your animal and uh they were few and far between. Yeah. Yeah. I am very thankful that there are so many more now and yeah. um, so many of them online teaching and educate, you know, just educating pet parents. And it, it's, it is really wonderful to see. And um, just one more question, if you have a moment. Bye.
One of the things, and I brought this up to you when we were speaking at SuperZoo, is it's just because of the work that I do, because of the animals that I help, a hill I will always die on is hydration. And how, I mean, how does the food accept hydration? Can you? Yep. So our our regular size nuggets don't accept hydration very well. In other words, yeah. they don't soak it up. Right. That's what okay. I was kind of thinking. You have to feed fresh water with your animal, which for us is common sense. Always make sure your animal and pour beef or bone broth onto the carnivore. You, this is all part of, you know, what we recommend. We did create some what we call easy chew nuggets. And that is, if I can remember correctly, the fish, the goat, the venison fish, the goat, the venison, and the lamb. Those are, we call them easy chew. They will absorb water. We add a little bit of baking soda to it to make it easier to bite if your dog's teeth are old or small or weak, right? Mm -hmm. And it will absorb, it will absorb more water. Mm -hmm. we, we, we understand the hydration thing too. It's, it's not ideal. This is why dry food, you know, in general is something we have to be very careful of. So add the water, add the broth. And keep the fresh water available. But carnivore regular nuggets does not absorb water. Okay. Right? It just, it doesn't because we just, we do, here's our process. It's quick bake. It's long, cool air dried. And that's what it is, right? It's yeah. very shelf stable. The dogs will hoover it. They're very delicious. Make sure you feed water. And we have a lot of customers that say, oh, I just put the bone broth in with it. You know, I just pour it on. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. Like either yeah. like a bone broth or a goat's milk, because then they're not just going to leave the water in the bowl. Like they'll actually they'll lack it everything up, and they'll be fine. Yes, they will. But you know, keep in mind this is like the ideal thing is the story I told you at the night before Super Zoo when we were in that lovely store and um, speaking to, with the BK pets. And Juliet says, Juliet used to say she's long dead now, but the best way to feed your animal is to go and kill a goat and bury it in the backyard and leave it to ferment for a week and then let the dogs out. So there's one way to feed raw. And yeah. if you have the backyard and the neighbors that will allow you to do that, okay, go for it. And if you're not quite there, there's carnivore or your bone broth, your goat's milk. Baby steps, baby steps, you know. I love that story. I'm going to use that story so much because, and, and that is, I will say, the first nutrition certification I got, my head was just spinning. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so complicated, <laughs> right? Yep. Why is it so complicated to feed a dog? And then I went through Dr. Billinghurst's new certification program, and I'm like, heavens, like, yep doesn't have to be so complicated it's so simple and he talks about um the evolutionary diet is what he he calls it and uh it, it's just it is it is so yep. simple but you have to be able to do it right and so yep. i'm really excited actually to air this episode and to let people know because i do get it all the time what about a dry food what about a dry food and i'm yep. forever have been like i'm sorry i can't i don't have yep. one that i can recommend Yep. And so I'm, now I'm so glad that I do. Yep. 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 And and I'm so glad that you found us and love to see the world changing in these beautiful ways where we can come up with a good idea, make it available to people, soften the tone, everybody. Yes. It's okay. It's okay to not know what to do right now. It's okay to find something that works for now. It's okay to learn, to take a course, to listen to a podcast. Just to open your brain and go, okay, and maybe on this dog, you're learning, but on your next dog, you'll have a down pat. Like, give yourself a pat on the back. Um, This is how we live, right? And I just I hate the negativity. I, I hate the, you know, you shouldn't. And, and I, I've had, I can't tell you how many people come up to me with tears in their eyes and say, I wish I had known. I didn't know. And I take her by the shoulders every time and I say, you did the best you could. 
Yeah. And you're not at fault here. You were learning and it's okay. And look at you now. You've heard mm -hmm. something new and something clicked and you're like, I get it. I get it. Right. And that's fantastic. That's called life. Just yes. positive. I know. I know. And I tell people all the time, look, I was there. I was a kibble feeder. I took my cats into the vet. They got their dewormer every three months. They got mm -hmm. their vaccines every year. They did, like I did all the things that I thought was right. Yes. And it just took that one, one thing, yeah. one, one thing. And it, it's different for everybody. Yeah. It just took one thing for me to be like, wait, what I think I know, I don't actually know. Right. And I know, right? That's, that's, that's called life. I, yeah. I refuse to be a part of the negativity. I, I have to, you know, I have to call a spade a spade. Like, I'm not going to pretend that, you know, there aren't some bad actors out there. Um, or some things that we need to stay away from. But I also know that there's a really loving community of, of people who are just trying to do their best. Let's find each other and be kind. There's plenty yeah. of room in this space. You know, people ask me, well, since you guys started your business, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of companies now that are, that are trying to use sprouted seeds. And I'm like, um, can we be so numerous? that we push the kibble, the crappy kibble, right out of the market. Can we do that? Wouldn't yeah. that be amazing? It would Honestly. be. Yeah, yeah. more collaboration. That, that is a quote. I don't know who said it, but I often pull it up and look at it because it, it says that when collaboration is at the top, competition is at the bottom, collaboration is at the top. And that is exactly where I want my mindset to be. Mm -hmm. And that's where I want everybody I talk to that their mindset is as well, because it, there is no making change if everybody is just in competition with each other. That's right. Let's learn from each other. Yay. Right? There you go. I'm so excited. <laughs> this was such an uplifting talk. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so glad we actually got to know each other in Vegas. Yes, me too. And I hope we get to do more together. And I am so excited to, again, get this episode out and to actually have a more versatile, shelf-stable product to, to be able to recommend to people. And I'm just, I'm so in awe of you for everything you've done and all of the paths that you have created for just in the healthy pet space, but for women, like that's a big thing. It's, it's it re like, if you're not a woman, you don't understand Yep. But, but I think most of our most of our listeners are women, so they all get it. Yep, yep, yep. I'm very happy to do that too. I love going to the shows now and looking around at all the entrepreneurs who are women. And yeah. I think, yep, when I was in my 20s, this was not the case, but we we've come a long way. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Yes, and you know, where can people find you? Can follow you on social media, and then I guess. Indie pet stores, like if an indie pet store doesn't carry it, please ask them. They can order oh, it for you kind of thing. Then we have distribution all across the U.S. and Canada and elsewhere. And they just have to ask for Carnivore and every pet store will know where to get it. Um, and and we, like I said, we are not like we're not a grocery store brand. <laughs> we are an independent pet retailer, small chains. Um, that's where we we really enjoy being with pet own, pet store owners that have a knowledge of what they carry in their stores right? That's, that's our goal. Um, and you can go to our website and there's a ton of information on our website. Um, it's, we're revamping it. So keep your eyes peeled over the next few months. You're going to see a really beautiful new redesign and we're going to simplify the information because over the years I've added this article and added that article and you could spend days on my website learning about natural rearing. So go to my website, just carnivore.com and you'll see all kinds of articles and information and every piece of information you could possibly want on all of our recipes um and and like i said stay tuned because we're going to have even more information but in a more organized form coming soon and yeah Wonderful. socials facebook instagram the whole thing youtube yeah i also will email you and ask you about the or i'll try to find the link to the homeopathy course on dog, dogs naturally so i can include it in the show notes if people are interested absolutely right. that's great. well thank you Thank you again, Maria. And guys, thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. I know that sometimes we talk about the same things 
over and over. And that's because it is so important. And I appreciate you for being here. And I will um, see or hear, maybe you'll hear from me next week, depending on where you're listening to this. And please give your pets some extra love from me and Maria this week. You bet. Bye, guys. Bye.